morning's news and sport for the borders with Angela Swabi. Good morning. The awarding of a major contract to remove asbestos shouldn't alarm tenants, says Scottish Borders Housing Association. David Knox reports. The £270,000 contract is for the safe removal of asbestos from residential properties and, according to SPHA, is part of the regulatory requirements to keep tenants safe. The Selkirk-based housing association say that asbestos removal from older properties is a standard contract which is renewed every three years and the work doesn't pose any risk to the public. The latest contract has been awarded to Glasgow company Enveraz Limited. No timescales for the work or details of which properties are affected have yet been published. We're being warned the number of COVID cases is increasing again, but the latest variants do seem milder and less likely to result in complications or deaths. The most recent figures from the National Records of Scotland show only one person in the borders has died with the coronavirus included on their death certificate since the first week in June. The advice is to stay at home if you feel unwell and get vaccinated if you're eligible. Scottish Borders Council's leader, chief executive and senior officer in Gala Shields this afternoon for the first of nine community conversation events. Like last year, the drop-in meetings are being held across the borders, this time involving senior staff from Leisure Trust Loop Borders too. They'll give locals the chance to ask questions or vent frustrations over services. This time, they're in all of the region's secondary schools to give pupils an opportunity to take part too. Council Leader Ewan Jordan. We have the chief executive will be there, we have senior directors there, we have councillors from the ward there, the leader of the council there, myself, um, and we also have obviously the boarders who will be sending along senior officers, their chief executive as well. So it's a real chance and it's one-to-one conversations. So it's a real opportunity to get your point across, get your views heard, and we take that forward. And we'll have a board up saying, this is what you said last year, this is what we did about it. The council a Gala Shields woman has been placed on supervision for the next 12 months for an attack on another parent outside a school. Nicola Kelly pleaded guilty to assaulting a woman, seizing her by the body and pulling her hair in Livingston Place last November. Selkirk Sheriff Court was told there had been difficulties between the children of the two women. 37-year-old Kelly had reacted when the other mother made comments. Historians are surveying damage following vandalism to the ruins of Jedburgh Friary. Excavated stones at the scheduled monument beyond the town's co-op car park have been prized out of the ground and other stonework chipped and cracked in recent weeks. Anyone with information is asked to contact Police Scotland. Tweeddale's area partnerships being advised to keep a tight hold on their purse strings at its meeting tonight. An assessment panel has recommended they turn down a funding application for £7,500 towards the cost of a documentary on the flight of Ospreys through the Tweed Valley. They said it wasn't specific enough to Tweeddale. The film would have been shown to 30 schools across the borders. The meeting is also being told more information is needed on a bid for almost £7,000 by Peebles' Urspace Youth Drop-Ins and that a decision should be be deferred to on £2,500 for the dyslexic collective towards equipment to help with schoolwork. A caravan park near Coldingham has been given permission to open all year round. Scoutscroft currently closes for a month in February to stop vans and lodges being used as permanent homes. But council planners agreed with the owner's verdant leisure that it might, bo- might boost the local economy and help the hard-pressed hospitality sector. Verdant leisure recently successfully applied to open Peace Bay Caravan Park all year round too. There's Lowland League football tonight. Berwick Rangers travel to Edinburgh University and Gallifrey Dean Rovers to Linlithgow Rose and in the east of Scotland, 3rd Division, Hoyt Royal Albert take on Livingston United. In rugby, Hoyt's head coach Matty Douglas believes a different approach to pre-season will benefit his players. The Greens beat Tyndale on Saturday. This weekend, they face Fylde and Sale. Douglas hopes the additional preparation will help the champions with the Premiership starting in less than a fortnight. We kind of took that decision a couple of games into last season because we didn't hit the ground running and we drew the opening day and then we went to Jed on the second game and we were good for 40 minutes and didn't score a try in the second half so we felt that those games we were underprepared and we took the decision that we've got these teams booked in the middle of last season that we knew that we were coming into a tough pre-season and hopefully you know, we've got the right approach and we've got a number of boys that are, are fighting fit and not a lot of injuries and that's all we can do as a, as a coaching team, give these boys the tools and if they're good enough Hopefully we've got another quality season coming up. It's fairing up out there. Let's see what Judith Ralston can tell us about today's borders weather. 
Good morning. Rather cloudy for most, although we'll see some early brightness for the east. Outbreaks of showery rain will pass through this morning, but as we head into the afternoon, the showers ease and the cloud will thin a break at times to allow some brighter sunny spells, along with just a scattering of showers. Highs today of 21 Celsius with moderate breezes, so not as blustery as yesterday. A few showers this evening before turning dry and clear tonight and cooler than of late, lows of 8 Celsius. BBC Radio Scotland's weather for the borders. Now, there's more news from the borders at half past 12. David Knox will be with you then. But in the meantime, we are now on BBC Sounds. You can catch up with the BBC News for the Borders on your phone or on your smart speaker. I think the what you say there is just play BBC News for the Borders. We're on twice a day, so give it a shot. Get the latest news on your smart speaker whenever you want. Just say, play BBC News for Scotland. And this is Good Morning Scotland with Gary and Laura. Now, the latest figures for drug-related deaths will be released in around an hour's time. It's an annual event which serves as a reminder of how grave the situation is in many communities across Scotland. I've been speaking to people in Dundee, which for several years has had a higher drug death rate than any other area of Scotland. But in the last year or so, a group of those in recovery from addiction launched their own publication, Recoverzine, to share their stories in the hope that it might inspire others to get clean. I met some of them, Maria, Alex and Jack, in a quiet corner of the city's Lochie Library, where they pulled together each edition of Recoverzine, which is supported by the Dundee Volunteer and Voluntary Action. So the magazine came to be about one year ago after the people working in my team decided that maybe it's a good idea to have a little like, magazine that would be focused on recovery, sharing recovery stories, promoting services, supporting people who are going through recovery and just making them know that they're not alone. And Alex, how did you get involved? I was in recovery myself for a long time. Um, and I got into volunteering, I started enjoying myself, um, I opened up other doors and I accessed it because I wanted to move myself back into work. And every recover scene, every edition of it has the story of somebody who's been there and done that and has, I suppose, to, for want of a 